Welcome to Decoding Superhuman. This show is a deep dive into obsessions with health, performance, and how to elevate the human experience. I explore the latest tools, science, and technology with experts in various fields of human optimization. This is your host, Boomer Anderson. Enjoy the journey. Superhumans, over the course of the 160 plus episodes now of the Decoding Superhuman podcast, we've covered many different areas, anything from nutrition to sleep to productivity to movement and so many others. But coming back to nutrition, one area that has been a little bit of an oversight on my part is the world of herbs or herbs as they're pronounced in some parts of this world. My guest today, we had a very thorough conversation around this area, and her name is Jody Duvall. Jody Duvall is a functional naturopath with a bachelor's degree in health science. She's the principal naturopath at Revital Health, the CEO of Health Optimization Practice Australia, something you guys may have heard me talk about before. She's a lecturer at Endeavor College of Natural Health, podcast host, and is completing her master's degree in human nutrition. So she's got a lot going on. This episode, as I've probably just alluded to a little bit, is a deep dive into the world of herbs and how we can use these different tools for areas like women's health, stress, and of course, focus and performance. The show notes for this one are at decodingsuperhuman.com slash Jodi, that's J-O-D-I. And please enjoy my conversation with Jodi Duvall. Before we get started today, I love doing this. I love giving a shout out to the listeners who have left five-star reviews on iTunes because these reviews mean so much to me and it just really lights me up. So this one comes from double A. H-Y-Y. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but excellent podcast full of riveting information from amazing guests. The host, Boomer Anderson, does a great job of interviewing and bringing his own knowledge and experience to the conversation. Well, double A, H-Y-Y, however you pronounce that, that is just amazing. Thank you for saying that. You brighten up my day and I salute you. Superhumans, if you want to leave a five-star review on iTunes, Go right ahead. I really appreciate it. And I'll read yours on the air very soon. Let's get to the episode. Jody, welcome. Hey, Boomer. So right now, and I'm not sure exactly when this is going to be released, we're in the thrills of this lovely pandemic. And... One question I have for people during this is what interesting habits have you picked up during this pandemic? This could be both good and bad. Like if you say Tiger King, no judgment. (laughs) (laughs) Husband's on Tiger King. I'm not. I'm too busy creating stuff, unfortunately. All right. Habits, probably... One, I'll start with the bad habit first. The bad habit is working too much because I saw this free time as an opportunity to go crazy. So that's one thing. So I've, I was just saying off air that I need to manage my stress a little bit better in that way. But I have been trying to meditate every night with my kids and myself before mm-hmm. we go to bed. So that's one thing that I've picked up, which has been really helpful. What meditate, do you use an app or do you just have, do you do like traditional Vipassana kind of thing? Yeah, I've been using Calm because it's easier for the kids. So yeah. it gets them involved in stories or music, which is a lot easier for them to not yeah, quite, get into Not that quite St. Harris kids. <laughs> well, we used to always, we, we actually used to read Vedanta to them, the, okay. the Vedanta tree, wow. <laughs> to get them to sleep. So that was the... <laughs> wow. I have that around here somewhere, but that's a, that's a pretty intense one. All right. So yeah, today, let's, let's get into the topic today because mm. I, admittedly, it's something that I'm fascinated by. We haven't delved into it too much on the podcast. 
And when, Mm -hmm. you know, you and I talk quite a bit and I was like, Hey, Jody, I need somebody to talk about herbs. And uh, (laughs) so let's, let's dive into this because I would love to just understand more about herbs, herbalism, and really just kind of the scientific basis for it. And I realized that that is a Mm -hmm. multi-part question in itself that could last an hour, but let's break it down and just sort of start with how should I look at herbalism? What is it? Mm, Okay. Yeah, you're right. We could speak on this for hours and hours and hours. So um, basically what I think of herbalism is a form of medicine. Yeah. So I think herbal medicine is a really good term for it. Um, And a lot of people think that there is not much science behind it, but there is a lot of science behind it. And what I like to explain it to people is as it it was the beginning of some of the pharmaceuticals that um, some of the drugs that we still use today came out of. Mm-hmm. So some of those are like the cardiac glycosides that um, Digitalis or Foxglove and has very similar uses for um, what we would use that to help to um, change the heart rate in someone. And other aspects of that as well is something like willow bark is one of the herbs and that very, acts very much like aspirin and that was used way before aspirin came onto the market mm-hmm. and because it contains a salicin acid or salicylic acid and that's a precursor to what it would be responded to as aspirin. Mm-hmm. So what I see as a very ancient form of medicine but we can then bring that into our modern day life now as an alternative um, and a lot of the time when you look at the research when it's compared to um, the, some of the drugs that would do very similar in terms of their actions, the, what, what you get out of those drugs is a lot, um, a lot of side effects, whereas the herbs tend to have a lot less side effects. Mm-hmm. So it's a, a bit more of a safer option for people. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that pharmaceuticals aren't necessary. They are, absolutely, and they get fast-acting, quick um, results happening, but the herbs are definitely there for a really good purpose as well. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's sort of where I would make it a little bit more simple. Yeah. And one of the things that I found interesting, and if I'm going completely off path, just reel me in, but like Mm. uh, metformin and French lilac, right? Like isn't metformin clinic just based on an herb itself or a flower? Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of the the constituents out of herbs are very similar acting to a lot of the pharmaceutical agents and Mm -hmm. that has been moulded off that. You know, they're they're the isolated forms of some of these compounds that are existing already in the the herbs, in the the medicine, the herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would love to talk about how to just source these because, you know, is it a matter of I just go and pick rosemary in my garden or is it like sourcing and just sort of how they make these into something that could be used as sort of herbal medicine rather than a spice, for instance. Um, Mm. How how do you go about curating this stuff? Yeah. So this is where my botany students will love me for here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And this is something really cool because I don't think a lot of people have the behind story of what herbal medicine or where you can use it. So firstly, when you take a herb, um, normally the, um, the universal way of looking at dosage is from a dried herb perspective. So mm-hmm. it's not a fresh herb. So when you're looking at the dosages, it's from a dried herb perspective. Now, taking that dry herb, it, there's so many different components of that plant that we can use. So there's the leaves or the aerial parts, there's the flowers, there's the roots. So all of these have different compounds or constituents that we can use for medicine. Mm-hmm. So once you realise which ones you want, you take that and you can, you know, obviously you can dry. This is what you were doing at home, but this is what the um, the other companies would be doing for manufacture. They dry the herb into powder um, and then they extract it somehow into something that we can use either a, as a, a tablet so they can compound it into a tablet using an extract pro extract for higher con- con- um, constituents and um, or you, they put it into a... Real quick, Jody. Expat- Mm. extract per extract what the hell yes. does that mean <laughs> so it will it will make a little bit more sense when i talk through the solvents okay, but when it. you i'll do that first then i'll come back to that 
So when you're actually extracting out um, what you want to extract out of a herb, so the, the certain constituents, there's particular percentages. So we first have the different solvents. So alcohol is one of the most common ones, which is um, more, more likely to be ethanol. Then we have glycerin is also another solvent that we can use. And water is another one. And so they're probably the main ones that we would be looking at to extract out um, certain medicine or the constituents that we would use as medicine. Mm -hmm. So then for percentage-wise, you've got 25% if you're, we're, we're talking about um, alcohol, the water-soluble components or constituents. So they would be mucilages, tannins, glyc some glycosides. Um, we've got flavonoids and saponins. Then, so that, that would be that percentage that would be drawing that back out of the plan. Mm -hmm. So then you've got um, 45 or 60%. Then you're looking at essential oils or alkaloids. So we'll talk a little bit more into those if you want to and what they mean yeah. for, for the body. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're looking at saponins and all of the glycosides mainly in that area. And then 90%, which is the highest percentage of alcohol, would be used to extract resins or oleoresins. So once that's been done, and you, you have to look at the amount of herb to the amount of solvent. So if you're looking at ratios with a herb, so say you have one um, kilogram of herb to one litre of solvent of, of, of some sort. So mm -hmm. that would be a one-to-one -one ratio. So mm -hmm. that means that it's, um, you know, one part herb, one part solvent. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like equal ratios. And if you have a one to two, it would be a one part herb to two part um, solvent. So that would be a lesser um, strength. Then sometimes you will have two part herb to one part solvent. Mm -hmm. So without sounding too complicated, that's sort of the basis of how you work out um, the, the strength of herbs mm -hmm. and also what you're taking back out of the herb to allow for that medicinal purpose on the body. Mm -hmm. So... From that point, you then look at um, extract pro extract would be you've extracted something, whether it's, um, so there's generally two forms that they use. They use decoctions mm -hmm. or percolation. So decoctions where you leave the herb in the solvent over time, and it can be up to four, six weeks, but that's a really lengthy process. So a lot of manufacturers will use it as a percolation. And that's just like you percolate your coffee. You just sort of drip, drip it through. Um, so it takes a little bit less time, um, but you sort of get the same result in the end. And generally it's a little bit, it's heated slightly more. So sometimes you can get um, removal of those the heat sensitive um, compounds as well. So you have to sort of weigh up those different sides of the extraction process. Mm -hmm. So when you get an EPE or extract per extract, it means that you've, you've doubled your amount of um, or the, the ability of the herb to have its um, concentration. So you're really, you've got your, your base herb that's been extracted mm -hmm. and you put more of the herb into the solvent and you're, you're making it double as strong. Okay. So then they will then take that back down to like a tar consistency in some cases and then that will be put into a, a, a tablet or a capsule to make it extra strong. In, in, in wow. Much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we went from zero to 100 on how to manufacture. Uh, there are number, Sorry, it's no, my uh, no, lecturing I, I love brain. It. I love it. I love it. And we're going we're gonna to double click on some of these. But the, the compounds, you know, one of my friends, Eric Perro, who's been on the show before, uh, he runs Medicinal Mushroom Company in Finland. Mm. And he calls these things compounds of interest, if you will. Uh, yeah. I would love to talk just a little bit more on some of these compounds of interest, maybe not specific herbs at this point, but there are some things mm -hmm. that came up in your language there, like alkaloids and it, it, maybe mm. you mentioned polyphenols, but it, some of these compounds and just sort of what those compounds in particular um, may be benefits or may, maybe some of the benefits of those compounds. Yeah. Yeah. So in each um, herb or plant, we have those phyto phytochemical compounds, I call them. Mm -hmm. um, so they're phytochemicals. Um, so you have a, a whole range of different ones and you can kind of look at them as, um, and, and some herbs will have multiple. Yeah. So it's not only just one coming out of one herb, it can be that's the beauty of the synergistic nature of herbs and the way that we can treat with them is that they balance each other out quite nicely. So you've got some things called uh, phenolic compounds or flavonoids. So flavonoids are one of those. 
Um, and flavonoids are quite common. A lot of people know about those and they are the polyphenolic um, antioxidants. So they can improve um, cardiac function. They can reduce um, angina. They can reduce cholesterol. Um, and they can also increase even function of the pancreatic um, islet cells. So it can be really wide ranging benefits across this, the board. This there. is why I love cacao so much, right? Because of yeah, <laughs> okay, exactly the high powered <laughs> antioxidants in it. Yeah, Fair definitely. Enough. As you saw saw the other day when I when I put up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, then you then you have um, something called still beans. Mm-hmm. So still beans are also um, really. Well, we would we would know them quite a lot actually. So that's the res- resveratrol and the curcumin. So um, they're the ones that we would hear a lot about. So that that that's been widely studied, and those um, are really good, obviously, and and highly powered antioxidants as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also got terpenoids. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've heard of terpenes. Yeah, oh, I, I've um, heard of terpenes in various different contexts, but let, let's let's <laughs> delve into those. Um, so. <laughs> Basically, for me to get through it all, so we have a, a, a quite a few different types of terpenoids, yeah? So mm-hmm. um, it works on a lot of different um, pathways of the body. Um, and N- NFK uh, beta is one of those pathways. Um, and you've got a lot of different, um, like, parts of that. So even the the... the, the how, how can I say the antimicrobial components of the terpenoids and also the um, ability of it to change, uh, you know, nervous system function and things like that in the body as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we have alkaloids. So that can also um, work as antimicrobial, but also really good for digestive function. And we have berberine in there as one of those. And we use that a lot um, depending on the how much we're using. We use that a lot for getting rid of um, dysbiosis type symptoms or um, you know, microbes that have gone out of balance in the body, mm-hmm. even parasites in some instances. Um, and that's a high ha- antioxidant as well and also mm-hmm. really good for lowering blood glucose. Mm-hmm. So very different you know, uses in there as well. Then we have saponins. So they can also work with cholesterol and um, increasing immune function. So an immunostimulant, we call it, um, and hypoglycemic as well. So that can help to lower blood glucose. Um, and they are also anti-carcinogenics as well. So help to protect against cancer. What would be like um, an example of a saponin? So saponin um, comes in all different forms um, of of herbs. So you've got saponins in bacopa. So Mm -hmm. bacopa is one of those herbs that's really good for mental function as well as an anxiolytic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll talk into more of those specific herbs soon. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's one of the examples there. Um, So And also soap. So when you get those soap nuts that you find out in the bush, I don't know if, (laughs) if anyone else has soap nuts out I feel like in Australia get, we do. You're going to get a high demand for soap nuts after this. This is going to be <laughs> great. Um. But when you rub them together and they become really frothy underwater, that's the saponin component of okay. those. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, um, and then we have the glyco... Sorry, we'll just move... I'll just get through the next two and that's cool. probably enough for those. You have the cardiac glycosides mm-hmm. and that's what I was talking about before with the digitalis plant. So that's mm-hmm acts on the cardiac function of the body. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, sterols as well. So sterols act similar to cholesterol in the body, Mm -hmm. but they're found in plants. So that's pretty much a good like kind of overview of of different sections of the constituents or the plant chemicals. Absolutely. Okay. So you and I, I mean, you see a bunch of clients all the time, and I'm sure this conversation comes around uh, people ask a lot about adaptogens, specifically as yes. it relates to um, benefits in stress resilience, etc. But mm-hmm. I know that there's several other categories that we can look at here um, with herbs. Or when you and I were talking before, right? Like sedatives, which yeah. could potentially be beneficial for sleep. Is there a broad categorization? Like you would say, this herb is an adaptogen, this herb is a sedative. And what would those like broader categories be, if you don't mind me asking? Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so when we're looking at um, stress and we sort of wanted to focus on that today, so when we look around um, stress or sleep um, and anxiety, those sorts of things, you've got some broad action groups. So I could go through all the herbal actions, but there's plenty of them. There's like a 100 of them, so mm-hmm. we wouldn't be able to get through them all. Um, but anxiolytics is one of those. So that would be classified as alleviating anxiety. Mm-hmm. So that's a group there. We've got hypnotics that really help to um, induce drowsiness and sleep Mm -hmm. Um, and they're also known as sporophytics Um, sedatives so they can reduce activity particularly in the nervous system and so they can decrease nervous tension and alleviate pain anxiety spasm or even induce sleep as well Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have nervines so nervines improve the tone and um, sort of vigor and function of the nervous system Mm -hmm. um, and they relax and energize the nervous system at the same time so that's the beautiful um, nature of herbs that I love working with is that sometimes they can work to increase function sometimes they can work to decrease function it's just maintaining that balance there Mm -hmm. um and then the adaptogens as well so like you mentioned it's um really it helps to build the body's resilience Mm -hmm. and it adapts to that physical or environmental emotional biological stressors um and it sort of helps to promote that physiological normalizing of function Mm -hmm. so you've got all those um and there are a couple of other ones that you can use like hypnotics which we um you know spoke about before for sleep but you've also got a lot of other analgesics that will come along with those herbs so the analgesics will be a a, a component of a lot of these herbs and that will help with pain relief Mm -hmm. so a lot of pain is associated with anxiety or stress or issues with sleep as well Mm -hmm. so um yeah they 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 tend to really beautifully like i say synergize and they're just really nice um the way that they come together in their formulations as well and Mm -hmm. that's what makes them so special and when you're dosing liquid form like i do a lot like i've got here like in this kind of bottle form format, mm-hmm. and that's a one to two. So um, the ratio there is quite, um, it's like a half strength. Mm-hmm. But in those forms, you can bring together the real individual nature of each herb for that particular person. And so it comes down to um, figuring out exactly what that person wants because sometimes they may not need a sedative. They might need more of an anxiolytic, and so you're putting double anxiolytics in there to make it better for them. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm going to throw out a couple of ways to go through this next part, because I think people are listening to this and they're like, holy shit, there's a lot here. And (laughs) there's a lot of really exciting stuff. You mean like, Hey, I can, I can use herbs to, and I know there's pronunciation differences here, herbs versus herbs. And like, that's great, (laughs) but we can use it to build stress resilience. We can use it to help sleep and it's a natural compound. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Before we go through some like tactile situations here, uh, Mm. I would love to just kind of get a few names of these because, I mean, some of the more popular ones like ashwagandha, for instance, or, well, I'm biased because I love it, but reishi, um, a few others, but like how some of the more, you mentioned bacopa. I would love to just Mm. go through some of those and just sort of kind of say like, here is an example and here's what it actually does for you. Okay, so I'll, I'll list off the adaptogens um, and some of these, like I say, are also, um, they also have other actions in there as well. Mm-hmm. So you have, like you said, withania or ashwagandha, which I call it. Again, the, the pronunciations are a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, we have um, ostragalus, which is actually really popular at this time yeah, for immune system, it's, um... but it's actually an adaptogen as well. Okay, okay. I mean, this yeah. is one that I think has come across every sort of natural recommendation around COVID. Is that right? Am I yes, allowed, I'm allowed to right. say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So astragalus and andrographis are one of the ones that I've been using lots in my clinic mm-hmm. um, for immune function. Mm-hmm. And the medium is also another one which is was used in the Spanish flu and that's for um, building resilience and antiviral components in the lung. So, wow. yeah, um, that's off track a little bit. Mm-hmm. But back to... Um, uh, adaptogen. So uh, bacopa is another one, um, mm-hmm. like we just said before. Um, but bacopa itself is um, also a, a nerve tonic and an anticonvulsant and cognition enhancing. Um, so it, it has a whole range of different actions there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got got a cola, which is another really powerful adaptogen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Korean ginseng is another one as well. 
So that's a really um, is good there, one. Is there anything special about it? Because I'm dating a Korean. Anything special about <laughs> Korean ginseng versus other ginseng? Or is it just sort of the sourcing? <laughs> Um, so Korean ginseng is a little bit more of an adaptogen. So uh-huh. some of the other ginsengs are a little bit more increased in the sympathetic nervous system. So gotcha. they don't tend to um, level out the nervous system as does the Korean. You mm-hmm. still have to be careful with any ginseng in someone who doesn't have the, the right vitality to be able to deal with that. And mm-hmm. sometimes you have to build that, like that base level vitality first before that you can give them any ginseng. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and Shizandra is another one. Mm-hmm. So Shizandra is a, a beautiful woman's adaptogen, I find. And same with, with Ania, I tend to marry them together quite nicely with women. Um, with Ania is also really high in iron and, well, not high, but high for a, for a herbal medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also is, is really good nutritive for women in that sense, but it can be for men and women. There's no reason why men can't take it. Um, just energetically, I find that it really works well with women. And Shadavari is another one there that's an adaptogen and that's also another woman's adaptogen I sort of relate it back to. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a beautiful one to use. Um, And neem leaf is another one. I tend not to use neem leaf too much, um, but that's another uh, well-known adaptogen. All right. So is there a a way people listening to this can look at the herbal world and say, this is an approach that could work for me. I I realize we're all individual and there's a certain Mm. amount of work you need to do on understanding your own biochemistry. But as we, you mentioned that certain herbs work better for women than men, but also Mm. I would love to just see like, is there some relevance of ancestral heritage here in the sense that, you know, if I were of this type of ancestral heritage, this herb may not work as well for me because we've never encountered it in evolution. Yeah, to, to, to some extent. And going back firstly to what you first said, I think that's a really good point that you make that we need to make sure that we have all the other sort of components of health in order as well. So these, nothing, nothing will be a miracle cure. So the herbs themselves will not, um, you know, they will really help and help nourish and push you in the right direction. But again, you need to make sure you're having your sleep, you're doing your exercise, you're eating the right foods and drinking the right water and all that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, But in terms of ancestral, um, when I'm dealing with these herbs themselves, I feel there's not so much an issue with where you, um, you know, the eclectics and the different um, ways of looking at herbal medicine. So they can, they come from all different areas. So we, we normally use the British herbal pharmacopoeia, Mm -hmm. which is the Western herbal medicine, but some of the um, traditional eclectics. Um, or even traditional Chinese medicine herbs will be best suited for those ancestral sort of traits, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, but they they are they are worldwide, I believe. I think anyone can use them. The only thing I see different there is when we're using flower essences, and a lot of people aren't really up for the flower essences because it's a little bit more wishy washy than just herbal medicine because mm-hmm. it's a little bit more energetic. Um, okay. But in that regard, there's a there's Australian bush essences and there's bark flower essences, and those two, I believe, are very different. And so, if you originate more close to where Australia is, I believe that's a better um, you know essence for you mm-hmm. versus those in England. So, but in 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 a in a short answer, I don't think it really does affect um, the way it works on the body. They're very adaptable. The herbs. Mm-hmm. All right. The, the point that everybody listening to this, including myself, is waiting for is how do I apply this? And, let, <laughs> let, and I would love to just kind of lay out a, a situation here because um, there's a lot of people listening to the show that probably mm-hmm. are, are taking on too much, um, mm. have a lot on their plate, a lot of stress, mm-hmm. and have a family in addition, um, yeah. have issues with sleep. You know the story, right? Um, yeah. How should these types of people look at herbs as an alternative to um, some other mess, uh, some other methods, if you will? Like, how can we okay. begin to tactically yeah. use herbs in our life to just perform better? Mm. Such a good question. <laughs> and I just had um, some clients in clinic today actually just tell me how fantastic they're and how happy they are with the herbs that I gave them um, and for, for multiple reasons. So I, I love herbs so much that 
that I can't help but be so passionate about them. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I have to say that, um, you know, I have to be careful saying this, but it's a, it's a safer alternative to going down the pharmaceutical route mm-hmm. and it can be just as effective in those instances. So as, as an example, and I'll go through a bit of a protocol for you in a minute, mm-hmm. but as an example in research, for example, for, and, and herbs are very well researched mm-hmm. and they are c- comparatively researched against drugs all the time. So just some examples of pilot studies that were done or pilot randomised double-blind controlled studies um, on passionflower that was found as efficacious um, as ox, um, oxa... I'll probably say this wrong. Oxazampan? Um, Astrazampan? Oxazampan. No, oh, oxazampan, which oh. is a, um, a generalised anxiety drug. So it's like a benzodiazepine. So it found- it's like a benzodiazepine kind of family. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so it was found just as efficacious as that mm-hmm. um, in a, a lot of different trials, plus uh, compared to other uh, medications as well. Um, and interestingly enough, so they they did quite a, a big study on these, um, and the well the, the issues with taking the drug. So the the incidence of harm harm to job performance, for example, or um, any other sort of reason why the, the participants would have had had harm caused to them, then that was a lot less in the passion flower group. So they found, um, and even things like kava, for example, which is for anxiety as well, mm-hmm. um, that was also compared against a similar drug um, as well as that drug itself. And they were found to have the same, um, you know, it was just as efficacious for the drugs compared to the herb. And this, is, this happens all the time. All right, Jody. So I have to ask about kava yeah. because it's one that's kind of shrouded in controversy. You know, it was banned in Germany, I believe, for a while. It may still be banned in Germany. But what do you? How do you look at the overall uh, rumors, at least, around liver toxicity? Pardon the interruption, but let's talk about your gut. I've been obsessed with performance my entire life. That obsession has led me to really push life to the edge. And sometimes I push that edge so far that I sacrifice my foundations. These are things like sleep, proper nutrition, routines, etc. When you come back to those foundations, you start looking at your gut health. And once you start looking at your gut health, you come across this word, enzymes. And enzymes are the workhorses of digestion. They break down your food into usable macro and micronutrients. And the research shows that by the time someone hits 65, your saliva and pancreatic secretions, both of which are involved in enzyme activity, can decrease as much as 50%. But what does that actually lead to? In some cases, it leads to chronic indigestion. Yikes. Setting the stage for gut issues. Double yikes. Yeast and mold overgrowth, Ugh. and even malnutrition, which nobody likes. This is why I'm a huge fan of the enzymes that are sitting next to me right now from Bioptimizers. Masszymes not only contains more protease than any other enzyme on the market, it also contains 13 other additional enzymes, including lipase for fat digestion, which works at every pH level from 2 to 12. In other words, It works at all aspects of your digestion. If you head over to bioptimizers.com forward slash boomer, that's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com forward slash boomer is in my name. You can use the coupon code boomer and get 10% off any package, which I highly recommend Masszymes. Please check it out today. And what's amazing about this company is they give one of the most insane guarantees I've ever seen. You get a full 365 days to try the product and you'll get your money back if you don't like it. Check it out, buyoptimizers.com forward slash boomer. Let's get back to the show. So I guess, um, and this happens a lot in research, is the misunderstanding of how herbs work in the body. Um, or um, extra cautiousness, I guess, um, about certain compounds that are lying in the herbs. 
So carbolactones was the topic of conversation there and it was about the extraction method, I believe. Um, and now it was, it was actually taken off the market in Australia and brought back on a few years ago um, and what they brought it back on as a glycotract. So it has 0% alcohol. And so when you're extracting out um, the carver through a glycotract or a glycerin, it means that you've got um, less opportunity for damage to happen on the liver when you're consuming the carver. Um, mm -hmm. And even in those instances where there was liver damage, it wasn't um, like that for everyone. It was only, um, you know, a very rare percentage of people that had um, a liver toxicity issue. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, with a lot of herbs, I think the way that their um, isolated compounds are studied and we have this happening all the time. So we've also got um, uh, Damiana was just taken off the market, which is a beautiful anxiolytic as well. Um, and that was something that had um, a arbutin which is um, also seen to have issues with stomach, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and stomach intolerability, so it could make someone feel a bit sick. And so that particular compound um, was brought up in a lot of different herbs, and so a lot of those have been wiped out and scheduled um, differently or scheduled for as mm -hmm. a drug, so only pharmaceutical or doctors um, can actually prescribe that until they do more research. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So I find kava a safe option now um, in, in that it's, it's got a, a better extraction method. Yeah. Okay. So the extraction method matters. There's probably still some people doing the dodgy extraction method out there, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, it is still effective in the old way, but it's just mm -hmm. more risk, you know, more risk okay. to liver. Yeah. But of it's course. a beautiful herb, kava. It's fantastic. It does a generalized um, anxiolytic on the on the mouth. So if you ever have a sore tooth, you put it in and wash it around and it makes your mouth go numb. It's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. I mean, your lips go numb when you have it. It's like my alternative happy hour drink sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's let's come back to the idea of uh, the stressed out. Let's call let's label them an executive, high performing professional, etc. Yeah, uh, we went down. We went down the wormhole on kava, and I know I took us off path, but I would love to mm. just sort of look at the web of options available to a person like this. Yeah. Okay. So protocols, in a sense, um, you know, you're always best off going to a professional herbalist, should I say, mm -hmm. or um, you know, a naturopath or someone who studied herbal medicine to get. Um, a really good understanding of what's required for you individually. But mm -hmm. you can use, um, if you have a good source of these, and these can be sourced from companies that are reputable or knowing the strength of the herb and where you, where you can go from there. So anxiety um, is a tricky one and you need to take all sorts of things into consideration as well as just treating with herbs, yeah. So, um, and that's to cover off for another day. But if you were to take um, anxiety or um, adaptogen style herbs and you would be taking them twice a day and you'd be able to give yourself a good coverage of, you know, morning and night dosing and then um, very safe for sleep as well as daily function and maybe mm -hmm. even better daily function and better performance. Mm -hmm. So I, I normally recommend a, a combination of herbs um, just because they act better. And like I said before, the synergist or synergistic action of those herbs working together gives you a little bit more benefit and performance um, and enhancement, I guess. Yeah. So it's like one plus one equals four kind of thing. Absolutely. And that's where I find so many of these herbs work so beautifully. They, they don't mm -hmm. work uh, as well just singularly. And that's where I think the, the, the magic of herbs is missed in modern day prescribing. Um, mm -hmm. And when you, when you speak to a, a traditional herbalist or a herbal medicine practitioner, then that's, that, that, those combinations of those herbs, they're the ones that have the, the best action and that's why they work so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So carb is a really good one for anxiety and also for sleep and um, all sorts of things. Passionflower is one of my favourites and it will mm -hmm. always remain one of my favourites. Um, so passionflower is a hypnotic as well and that has a lot of flavonoids in it um, and that is an anxiolytic as well as um, it, it, it just... It's such a beautiful herb to go along with all the other anxiolytics that you can use. Um, mm -hmm. It really marries well with a lot of different other herbs. So skull, skull caps, another one. And skull caps, um, yeah, skull caps used a lot for sleep. Um, so it's actually used for sleep maintenance, not sleep onset. 
Um, mm-hmm. So I use it a lot for sleep at nighttime for my clients where they can um, increase the dosage at nighttime. But in the day, they would have a smaller dose just to maintain um, low levels of anxiety or to help with that um, adapting to the nervous system, you know, overstimulation mm-hmm. throughout the day. Um, so, but then I, I put that with a valerian and I'm sure you've heard of valerian before. I take yeah. it every night. Um, Does yours that's... smell like old socks? Because it mine smell like horrible. stinky socks. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to ask, like, is there a reason why this herb smells so horrible? Like, <laughs> well, I, a lot of them have their very unique flavors and scents. Let okay. me put it that way. Yeah. So okay. a lot of the Nervine anxiolytic herbs are okay. Um, mm-hmm. They smell beautifully. Uh, they actually smell a lot like berries. Like with Thania, it's beautiful. It smells really nice. Mm-hmm. Whereas the liver herbs and the detoxify- de- detoxifying herbs and the ones that we use for getting rid of parasites or the antivirals, antibacterials, ooh, they're gross. And I always yeah. have to prime my clients to try and take the liquid form because it's always taking it like a shot in the club. It's like quick down it and then chase yeah. it with something else. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so valerian, I, I use a lot as well, particularly for sleep, but also for Mm -hmm. anxiety and valerians for sleep onset and sleep maintenance. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a sedative as such, and it can really knock you out at the end of the night. Um, Mm -hmm. and unless you've tried these herbs and felt the, and how effective that they actually are, you'll never really be sold until you actually see that happen. Mm -hmm. And they do, they, they absolutely (laughs) amazingly work. And um, the other one was Bacopa. So I always sort of marry Bacopa as well in there because it gives you that cognitive advantage in the day and then you mm-hmm. can actually use that for um, that anxiolytic component as well. So it's an upper without being up. Interesting. So I, yeah. I would love to just double click on a couple of things here. Uh, mm. One, can you overdo these? Because they are they are herbs. So I imagine people, just like people say this with cannabis, right? Like they say, Hey, it's a natural thing from the earth. Can you actually overdo it? Well, maybe. Mm. Can you overdo adaptogens? And what does that look like? You, you can. I think there's just a, there's a point in time where they just don't become effective anymore. Um, yeah. And I think just like with anything, you, you're safer with herbs than you are with pharmaceutical, you know, isolated mm-hmm. drugs. You're definitely safer there because you, you're, you're less likely to have huge reactions in the body but it's just non effective after a certain point and you can get imbalances in the body and we're always working towards that optimal balance. So it's rather, you know, just take it at the degree that it's required for you and it's more based on weight, I believe, um, and that's how I dose my herbs for my clients, like very different for children versus adults and even, you know, men who weigh a lot more than the woman. Um mm-hmm it would be very different in how you dose those. So obviously the higher body weight you would be, the more you would require, you know, basically. Um, Mm -hmm. So you would only need two or three doses of herbs per day and that any more than that, you're overdoing it. Mm -hmm. And one of the common, I guess you didn't say opportunities for people is the art of staying asleep. So like getting asleep for people, Stay, uh, getting asleep for people, yes, there's th- certain things you can do. Melatonin, valerian, as we discussed, mm-hmm. and a few others. Mm-hmm. Staying asleep. Mm. How, uh, any sort of herbs that particularly help with that element of like sleep architecture? I guess it would be an anxiolytic in some ways. Anxiolytic, yeah, absolutely. So the anxiolytic um, and a hypnotic or a sedative. And Skullcap, I find, has been the most effective, the one that okay. I mentioned before. So that... Um, and that has a particular affinity for the sleep maintenance. So it means that you maintain your sleep so you can actually stay asleep. Mm-hmm. So that means that you are actually um, allowing your body to fall into that deeper rest um, mm-hmm. and that's where it has its particular effect. But you, if you wake up in the middle of the night, then you can also take these. Um, so passion flower and Skullcat are a really good option to take if you do wake up and have it in sort of a dropper form next to your bed. Um, And in saying that, you know, liquid is, I believe, the better form of taking the herbs. Um, Yeah. And then alcohol extract, I find even more effective in that I believe it takes or it gets taken up in the body a lot quicker that way. So that's another sort of component to it. And and do you get, so a common thing that people do when they wake up in the middle of the night is they may mega dose melatonin or they may yeah. use something like that to get back to sleep. 
Um, yeah. Do you get the sort of, uh, for lack of a better word, hangover with these that you do with melatonin where you just feel kind of groggy and not there the next morning? Um, skull cap, skull cap and, and passion flower, no. Passion flower, mm-hmm. definitely not. Valerian, mm-hmm. maybe. And valerian can give people really weird dreams as well. Um, so depending on what type of metabolism or metabolizer you are, I find that there's a little bit different between different people. And so some people can get really vivid dreams with valerian and mm-hmm. therefore feel a little bit more hungover in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, but safe to say a lot of these herbs, you don't, you don't tend to get that they're all mild sedatives. They're not. They're never classified as a, a sedative. It's all mild sedative in their actions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, dosing for something like uh, you used it, you used the word withania, but I, mm. it's, I I've commonly called it ashwagandha. I guess they're same same. Um, how do you how do you look at dosing for these? I mean, you're delving into the literature, but there are, are there like little pearls that we can give people, or are mm. we allowed to? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So with Ania um, as such, depending on, so it all comes down to this ratio like I was going before with the the botany lecture that I started with. (laughs) Please go go with it. Um, so with the with the ratios, so if you've got say a one to one, then it would be a lot more that you could give your your body or or um, dose versus a um, one to two well a, a two to one. So here, for example, um, and I know this is probably not going to go live, but I've got a two to one with Ania. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that um, that would be dosed at tw- uh, ten to thirty mil per week. And so 10 to 30 mil per week, um, if you have a a one-to-one, then that would normally be um, 20 to 50 mil per week. And so you dose it differently there. Um, And in some of the literature will only be dried form and some literature will say uh, liquid form. So it just Mm -hmm. really depends. The dried form, obviously, it will generally be less. So you're you're looking at around two to nine grams in general for a Mm -hmm. lot of the different herbs. But that Mm -hmm. can vary considerably between the herbs. This is fascinating. Gosh, there's yeah. so many things. Uh, and, and then combinations, any specific combinations? I know you mentioned a combination for women. Uh, mm. Any specific combinations that work really well with men that you've seen? Yeah. So withania works really well for men, but I okay. mix it with the passion flower. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of men have issues with aches and pains and, um, you know, just because they've either worked out or they've been sitting too long or they've overextended themselves because men tend to be a little bit more sillier than women sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they go on skateboarding down the road and accidentally <laughs> tripped over, that sort of thing. Yeah. So therefore, um, I find Californian poppy works really well with men. Mm-hmm. Um, and Californian poppy is a, it's a hypnotic and analgesic. So it works on the, the pain receptors in the body as well. So, um, that can work really well with men if they're feeling a little bit of, um, underlying pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the passion flower, then you've got ashwagandha or withania and, mm-hmm. um, things like bacopa because men love to have that, that brain stimulation as well, you know, women too. But I think that's mm-hmm. a really good combination in terms of an anxiety sleep protocol. Uh, final question just before we go into what are actually my final rapid fire questions. <laughs> but um, one of the one of the uh, things that I would love to talk about just with Bacopa in particular, but also mm. some of these other herbs. Yeah. I, I've heard it, or at least personally experienced with B- Bacopa, there's a little bit of a, and I, I don't know exactly what to call it. Maybe I need some some herbs in order to get my verbal fluency better, but there's a little bit of a (laughs) building period, if you will, where you have to build up a, it's not like immediately acting. Is that the case with all herbs or is there certain ones that are immediately acting versus others that, you know, you have to build up a, for lack of a better word, tolerance or something to Mm. them? Yeah. So um, like ginkgo biloba and bacopa tend to have a little bit of a building period when we're talking mm-hmm. sort of cognition enhancing herbs. Ginkgo probably a little bit quicker, but be, uh, but bacopa, yeah, we're, we're looking at around about four weeks to really get optimal benefit from it. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the herbs will have within two to four day action. So um, it's something that it varies like I say, with a lot of things with herbs, it varies considerably. And to, you really have to know them in and out to know which ones will work quickly and which ones won't. So the sleep herbs and the anxiolytic and the nervines tend to work a lot quicker than something like a cognition enhancer herb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. 
Okay. So just to Trent. just to note on something before we get onto the rapid fire boomer is that okay. um, the risks inv- the risks for herbs and they they don't come without risks. So it's good to know these if you're going to be yeah. taking them. Um, so some of the things to look out for is herbs like licorice because licorice can be um, an anxiolytic or a, a nervine or an uh, adrenal tonic as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but licorice can reduce the potassium in the body. So overtaking mm-hmm. licorice can actually increase blood pressure. And this mm-hmm. happens in a lot of different people, even just from taking teas. So, um, you know, and even the interactions as well between other drugs that have very similar actions in the body. So herbs, so you do have to be aware of sort of the drug interactions as well as interactions within the body. Um, mm-hmm. And another one that people should really know about is St. John's wort, a beautiful herb and really effective um, antidepressant herb. And really mar- like has been well researched in relation to antidepressant drugs versus St. John's and it has mm-hmm. really good action. So you can't take it when you're on an antidepressant though because that's interacted. Um, but it does affect the CYP enzymes in the liver and the small okay. intestine. Yeah, so mm-hmm. some of these herbs as well as chase tree, which is a woman's herb that we use for balancing cycle, these can really help um, or increase excretion of drugs out of the body so when you're taking any other drug and taking these herbs, it means that the drug may become ineffective. So it's mm-hmm. something that people just have to bear in mind just to make sure mm-hmm. that you're taking the right herb for the right thing as well as know what drugs you're on. Yeah. Okay. So drug interactions, you're potentially accelerating the metabolism of other drugs. Do I have that right? Or I guess it's kind of individual, right? Depending on what drug it is. Taking. Yeah, okay. in some instances with things like SSRIs, you can actually increase that, um, you know, the serotonin or you can increase the ability of the drug to leave the body quicker. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it, there is some issues that you need to be aware of when you're taking drug, uh, taking herbs and if you're taking drugs at the same time. Mm-hmm. I swear we're going to get to the final questions, but are there good resources out there for people Uh, maybe books or websites that you recommend people, if they wanted to kind of educate themselves, where would you point them to? Mm. So uh, like I'm, I'm very familiar with all the Australian, um, like the the herbal uh, gurus, I would say, Um, and Kerry Bone and Metagenics is also in the US. Mm -hmm. Um, So Kerry Bone is a really good resource for any of the herbal literature. And if you go onto the websites, Mediherb, um, Australia or America, you can find some really good literature and research there um Mm -hmm. and there's obviously books as well so i've got a plethora of books behind me but Mm -hmm. he bone does a clinical guide to blending liquid herbs and if you've got um just the first section of it that gives you a really in deep detailed viewpoint of herbs in there plus Mm -hmm. um holistic herbals um you know books that give you a bit more understanding of how to make and what to make out of the herbs and a more Mm -hmm. of a a home-based remedy sort of book so that's really good as well Amazing, amazing. But if All anyone right. has questions, they can always contact me, email me, and I'll send them what they need. Uh, be careful. You may get some people from random parts <laughs> of the world coming out to you. That's but right. uh, <laughs> let, let's, let's kick this off. What's your top trick for enhancing focus? Top trick to enhancing focus. Ooh, relaxation and regular breaks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, favorite or... I, Book which has most impacted your life? The Peaceful Warrior. Ooh, I reckon. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I need to Ooh, Dan, check this one out. Dan Millman. Okay. Yeah. I love The Peaceful Warrior. And Peaceful Warrior is also in a film. Um, it's made into a movie. So that's equally as enjoyable, but I always enjoy the books more than I do films. Sounds like a good alternative to Tiger King. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have to check I that out. So, this <laughs> so uh, last second to last question actually is uh, mm. what excites you most about the health world right now? And right now is a pretty challenging time. So I'd love to hear. <laughs> well, um, I think the, what, what I'm taking out of this whole current situation and the most exciting part of health at the moment is awareness and people's um, passion and drive to find um, better health for themselves. And that mm-hmm. can mean so many different things. It can mean finding the, the right practitioner or connecting with the right people or really searching for the, the good information and critiquing information. So it means that people are actually getting more better at finding the information because there is so much out there Um, and it brings awareness to industries all all across the world that people can 
utilize and find different alternatives that we never really thought about before. And in that, we're expanding, you know, consciousness, brain power, connection, and all of that sort of thing. So I think it's such a, a positive thing that's happening at the moment. Um, we're really feeling like there's a, a uniting happening, a community mm-hmm. happening, um, and really borders are, 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 are no issue And when we've got, you know, uh, things like, uh, you know, Vimeo or you've got all the video um, abilities to portray information. So I think that's something that, is a really positive thing around this time. Amazing. Jody. if people wanted to find more about you or even take up that offer that you so generously gave, <laughs> um, where can they learn more about you, the stuff that you're involved in? The uh, floor is yours. Cool. Well, uh, website-wise, it's revitalhealth.com.au. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram is revital underscore um, health. And or if you just type in Revital Health, you'll find me. Um, I, my emails and contacts are all on my website, so you can find me there. I've got a, a new course coming out soon, which is called Base Health, and I'll be putting that out to the world, and it's going to be something that people can use to really get to that next level of health by getting their base health sorted first. And it, mm-hmm. it's, it's a whole, takes you through a whole range of different things there. Um, yeah, but I'm a, I'm a forever teacher and a forever learner. So I, I do welcome questions because as soon as I get a question, I want to dive a little bit deeper if I don't know the full story. So I, I do mean it. Like people can contact me. I'm a lecturer at Endeavour, so I ask questions by students. So I always, um, yeah. I love learning and love answering questions too. Amazing. Jody, thank you so much for taking the time today. This has been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to go delve into sky, uh, skull cap. Sorry, not sky cap. Sky <laughs> else. Uh, I'm going to go delve a little bit into skull cap after this. So thank you for the education. Yeah. Oh, pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Boom. I really, I really loved it. Had a good of fun. To all the superhumans listening out there, have an absolutely epic day. And remember, choose health. Wow. That episode was a lesson, even for me, that was a lot. I'm so happy that Jody came on the show. There was a lot that I took out of that episode. And even now, I've just placed an order for Skullcap because who doesn't like sleeping through the night? There's been a few experiments that I've run in the past, but I think we'll bring back with items like Kava Kava, for instance. But if you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more or even just get references on those herbs that Jody mentioned, head on over to decodingsuperhuman.com slash Jody. And if you really enjoyed the episode, can I ask just a favor of you? One moment, superhuman. That's all it's going to take. If you can head on over to iTunes and leave a five-star review with a comment. Of course, I read them all and I really enjoy getting reviews from you guys. Frankly, it just brightens my damn day. So please take that time and I love to hear from you guys soon. Have an absolutely epic day and remember, choose health.